isn't putting it back to the audience and playing to each other. I don't have that. Blues America, like cornbread and chili. Mmm, doggy. Damn, that's good. Ah, this is Oscar Wilson, Mr. 43rd Street, Chicago, Illinois, and you listen to Blues America. Crockett, my special guest today on Blues America. That's him in the music bed with Traveling Blues. And we were just talking about that. Charlie, you, uh, you heard the old man talking about the blues, and uh, I can see some gate mouth brown reflected in uh, the way that you uh, play music. So tell me, how do you define the blues? Well, I said it a, I said it a whole lot, but, you know, blues to me is, you know, is this, this, it's bad feelings and the way that you get them out by singing them makes you feel good you know um that's the simplest way i could explain it from my position well americana is certainly the trend these days Uh, tell me how you've been able to avoid some of the pressures and the pitfalls that the labels and the industry as a whole uses to uh, get people within certain boundaries and i've just I've just kind of tried to stay away from that and told them straight up. You know, they, I mean, I, I don't know boundaries, but I just always stuck to blues and country, you know, or Texas and Louisiana music. Because when you start talking about Americana, that is such a meaningless term for somebody like myself and a lot of these other cats because that genre may be full of just nothing but, you know, alternative rock or you know, all country and all this type of stuff. And, 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 and there ain't nothing wrong with that because it, it don't really mean nothing, but it's just like in a world where I have promoters over the last 10 years telling me, whatever you do, boy, don't call it blues. I'm like, no, that's exactly what I'm going to call it. <laughs> you know, because now, now, I mean, and it's, I think, you know what I'm saying? Nowadays, it's, it does start to have meaning because, and because people will see that they start drawing that connection because, you know, Hank Williams forever changed the direction of country music. And I mean, this man was directly informed by black blues street music from a young age. And I think that impact, that impact on that man, I mean, you just, it's hard to quantify, you know, that the effect of somebody like that, just, and I'm just saying, talking about like the country world, you know, and how difficult, how much they draw that line between country and blues. But it's like, I feel like that with George Jones too. I mean, those, the best country singers are really blue sounding. They got a real blue, a real blue tone. Yeah, I love it. Um, you're a true descendant of Davy Crockett, is that right? I mean, you know, minus the raccoon hat. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's a that's true. That's a hundred percent true. My yeah, my family my family on that side is all from Tennessee and Virginia way back then and then everybody come to Texas and uh my grandfather is also Charlie Crockett and He's 94 years old, and if you go see him over at the at my daddy's house, you can strike up a conversation about it. It'll go on all the rest of the night. See about, you know, relating her family stories about the old, you know, about the old Crockett family and Elizabeth Cotton Crockett and that whole nine, you know. Um, yeah, it's kind of funny, though, you know. You get that Disney, you know, I get that. It has that Disney effect, too, so, <laughs> you know, so. You know, it really does. You know, it's a business. It's a businessified Davy that people are thinking of. You know, but he was a really, uh, he was a real radical dude. You know, he wasn't down in Texas on behalf of the American Empire. He was running from it, and so you you get those conflicts. You know, in that you know the American dream and the 
in the in the in the in the pioneer trying to escape the trying to escape the court system, you know, thing, I guess, you know, all mixed together. But yeah, it's uh it's tried and true and real as it gets, brother. That's amazing. Now, as part of our responsibility as a crack research team, it's our job to stalk you on the internet. <laughs> and uh, I noticed that you have a relatively recent photo where you look like you you had open heart surgery. Yeah, I did, man. I'm a I'm a three I'm three weeks out the hospital from that one. Yeah, I got a I had a valve in my aorta. They call it, it's an aortic valve replacement. I had a I had that done. Uh, yeah, just a just a few weeks ago. I was a, something I was born with that I was uh, about a year away from you know dropping dead on a stage, and I just got lucky because. Uh, I'd been dealing with a hernia that I'd got when I was playing on the street uh, about seven years ago, and I had it all this time and was managing it because I didn't have health insurance. And You know how it is. Young men, even old men, don't go in and get themselves checked out and by playing real hard on the circuit. and It was bothering me more on stage, so I went in this last summer to try to get it taken care of, and stum- we stumbled on this heart condition, which I got really... I was born with Wolf Parkinson's white, which I knew I had, but I didn't realize the other complications that had pre- developed as I got older. So I got really lucky, man, and they, they saved me. I was really close to heart failure. I was heading towards heart failure because basically my heart was stopping, slowly shutting down um, based on this leak in my valves that was causing it to swell up and flow blood back into the chambers when it should be. And uh, so honestly, man, I'm a... Uh, I am a very lucky man. I'm glad it worked out. Well, thank you. We're just about out of time. I'm going to talk about cutting records and um, the quality of records. And, you know, critics say B.B. King Live at the Regal. That's got an amazing uh, Sweet Black Angel track. And uh, that's a critic's favorite. Almost a perfect record, they say. And I talked to B.B. King, and he didn't like the record. That don't surprise me none. Is that just how it goes in the music business? It's all about interpretation. If it, if there is such thing, it's because it, it it's in the heart of the people over time because of what it can come to mean to society. It's possible in that way only, you know. And I think that's kind of amazing what you're saying that like that the al- an album can have some kind of effect, and it's almost it's almost perfect. It's a perfect answer that he gave you. He's like, you know, he's like, man, that ain't even one of my good ones. You know, and and you hear that so much from the really great, great cats, you know. And, yeah, I mean, I know it's something everybody loves B.B. King, but that recording to him, that famous recording of Lucille where he's talking about the story of his guitar, and he's just playing blues, and he's talking about how he don't want to be a pop singer like Frank Sinatra and Tyler Davis Jr. and all of them. And he's like, they're great, but he's like, I can get a little bit of every single one of them about this little guitar. And then he just starts doing it. All right, Charlie. Well, congrats on this beautiful record and the success you found on this journey. And I hope to see you out there on the road. I will, man. I'm so grateful that y'all decided to let me talk with y'all. I really am so grateful to you, man. I I can't express it to you. So I I, I hope we can do it again sometime. All right. Well, thanks. And for the listeners, the Way Way Back Blues with Sleepy John Estes is coming up next. Blues America is endorsed by the Phoenix Blues Society. Learn how to become a member at phoenixblues.org. I'm John Primer. And I'm Bob Courtois. You listen to Blues America. What we're going to do right here is go back. Way back. Back into time. It's time to go back, baby. Way, way back. This is the Way, Way Back Blues. I tell you what you do Let me speed out and get acquainted with you Well, you won't have to go Well, you won't have to go You can get what you want on huh? Right here in my liquor store You got a little whiskey You got a little gin All you got to do is step in the back end Well, you won't have to go Well, you won't have to go You can get what you want on huh? Right here in my liquor store Monroe 
the street Come to far city, ride around with me Where do you want to go? Where do you want to go? You can get what you want on right here in my liquor store You got some on the floor, you got some on the shelf All you got to do is just to help yourself Where do you want to go? Well, you won't have to go You can get what you want on right there in my liquor store Miss Peter Adam, this kind of man You ask me for a favor, you won't make you shame Well, you won't have to go Well, you won't have to go You can get what you want All right, you in my liquor store the way way back blues with a pre-war cut by blues legend sleepy john estes singing about some liquor store blues deco records 1938 now john said he was always sleepy from music and a hard life of farming he kind of sang with a crying style and he always sounded like an elder the tennessee native had a long career thanks to the rediscovery period during the 60s blues revival by bob kester of delmark records he found him nearly blind and living in total poverty he died in 1977 while on tour. Many rock stars have praised him, including Robert Plant and Bob Dylan. His music is required. Pretty serious blues fans. This is where the blues talks. A little program recorded weekly at the Chico Tizza Memorial Studio in Phoenix. I've been your host, Drew Verbis. I'd like to thank my wonderful special guest, Charlie Crockett. And uh, as always, links to today's special guests is posted at our website, bluesamerica.com. Thanks to all the fine community radio stations for supporting the blues. And all of you who are listening, be a patron and support Blues America. Bye. America next week. Blues America. America. Promotional consideration for Blues America is provided by the Southwest Musical Arts Foundation, the Phoenix Blues Society, Record High Vinyl. The Rhythm Room Concert Club, Mojo Hand Blues Art Apparel, and the listeners of Public Radio.